Good morning, and this is uh, calling to order the uh, Solid Waste Authority Board meeting for October 25th. And with that, uh, ask for a roll call, please. Vice Mayor Weiss. Here. Commissioner Sachs. Here. Commissioner Marino. Here. Commissioner Bernard. Here. Commissioner Kerner. Here. Commissioner McKinley. Here. Mayor Weinrock. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pelowitz, could I ask you to please lead us in the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance? Of course. Lord, we are meeting today to conduct matters of business for our community. Guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that our affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being our source of guidance today. Amen. Thank you. Uh, do we have any additions, deletions on our agenda? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we do. Uh, we have an add-on to the consent agenda, item 5J, which is the granting of an easement to FPNL uh, to install power lines on the east side of Jog Road, uh, adjacent to our landfill. We have a revision to item 92, uh, which is the uh, 2023 Blighted Property Grant Award. Uh, page six has been replaced. There was an error on page six. And we have a deletion, which is item 9F1, which was the inquiry from Hughes Energy Group. It was deleted at their request. All right, with that, uh, looking for a motion. So moved. So we have a motion to adopt the amended agenda. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Sachs. Um, all in favor, all opposed, that motion carries 7-0. All right, uh, next item. Uh, we have our minutes from August 24th. Have Move approval. Okay, we have a, a, mo a motion by Mayor Weinroth and a second by uh, Mayor, <laughs> Commissioner Sachs. Uh, all those in favor, all those opposed, that motion carries against 7-0. Uh, all right, we need a receive and file for on item 4A and B, the Citizens Advisory Committee and also the Small Business Advisory Committee uh, minutes. So moved. I have a, a motion by Mayor Weinroth, a second, second by uh, Commissioner Marino. All in favor? I'll oppose that, uh, so receive and file those as seven to zero. All right, moving on, item number five, our consent agenda. Would anyone like to pull any items from consent? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you, Commissioner Kerner. We have a motion by Commissioner Kerner, a second by Commissioner McKinley. All in favor, all opposed. That also um, carries seven to zero, thank you. All right, moving on to uh, matters by the public. Do we have any cards for public comment? Seeing none, okay. Uh, we have no public hearing workshop. We have no old business, uh, new business none. Uh, from executive director, nothing from legal counsel, operations, all right, customer information services. Okay, I'll be handling this one okay. uh, for customer uh, service on this, this one. This is going to be item 91. 91. This is a, we received a request for an extraordinary rate increase from FCC Environmental Services of Florida. They are the service provider under the franchise collection agreements for service areas three and four in the south at the south end. Uh, under our contract, our franchise agreement, they have the right to request an extraordinary rate increase. Um, the decision as to whether it's granted or not is the board's. Um, I think you may want to uh, consider first having uh, Mr. Joe Sandor of FCC come up and uh, present uh, his, his position and their request, and then uh, I will respond afterwards. All right. Uh, we have a card from Mr. Sandora. And so uh, you'll be recognized, sir, three minutes. Is that a sufficient amount of time for your presentation? Okay. Good morning, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, County Commissioners. Uh, just a quick background. Um, when the contract was put out in 2019, 
uh, for bid. The authority established a mandatory 20% participation goal for small minority women and small businesses. Um, it was FCC's thought that the only way we can meet that goal was to use a temporary uh, labor staffing company uh, because we did end up with two of the largest uh, service areas in Palm Beach County. <clears throat> So then on November 3rd, 2020, Amendment 2 to the, to the Constitution, Constitution of Florida was passed, approving uh, the minimum wage increases up to $15 an hour. Um, so based on that, um, our operating costs are going to see a great increase, uh, upwards of close to $300,000 a year. So the contract, uh, as it was said, as um, in the franchise agreements, the rates may be adjusted uh, based on extraordinary and unusual changes in the cost of operations that can be reasonably foreseen by a prudent operator. So basically, we had no idea that this uh, amendment was going to pass, increasing the minimum wages every year by a dollar. So it's, it's putting a burden on us uh, because our costs are going to increase uh, significantly. And um, we provide a great service to zones three and four. A lot of the, the commissioners city, sitting here <laughs> cover those areas. So um, we always go above and beyond to take care of the residents. Uh, as you know, you get very few calls from our, our service areas. We always work with staff um, to go above and beyond to service the residents in those zones. Uh, we never turn down a request. So today, uh, we come before you and ask you to approve uh, the rate change <clears throat> and approve staff's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Pelowitz. You... Yes, so um, we did receive the request from FCC. Um, we um, differ with them a little bit in their calculation, but my understanding is, is they're okay with staff's calculation. Um, we believe they are entitled to the increase based upon the increase in the minimum wage, which falls with under both the extraordinary rate increase section of the contract, but also the change in law con uh, section of the contract. So based upon that, um, we are um, requesting that the board authorize staff to provide an extraordinary rate increase to FCC Environmental Services to compensate A and A staffing firm to increase the wages of the employees provided to FCC to the $11 minimum wage based on cost substantiation reflecting 14 cents per hour for regular hours and 21 cents per hour for overtime hours for FY 2023. And then in the future to authorize staff to provide an extraordinary rate increase to FCC in the final three years of the franchise collection agreement in accordance with the methodology presented in the staff analysis herein is subject to annual authorization and approval by the board. So basically what we're recommending is that we calculate the um, we, we base the wages of ANA's employees at 10.50 an hour, um, and then we use that adjusted by the annual uh, RRI increase, which is the inflation adjustment on this contract every year, against whatever the minimum wage is, and then we'll calculate what that increase is, and we'll pay them. Uh, that would be approved as part of the uh, board item. Uh, we think this amendment passed with, I think, more than 70% uh, approval. I think the residents uh, ultimately um, would expect that these employees would be uh, compensated, and, and it's reasonable um, to compensate FCC as well. So if there's any questions, I can go into the details, but um, our analysis is presented on the last page of this item, which is 37 of 37. That's our projection right now. Obviously, um, it could fluctuate based upon the number of hours that, that um, ANA's employees actually work on these contracts. So we're recommending approval. All right, and uh, Mayor Weinroth, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I got some problems saying that this was not foreseeable. I mean, obviously, I think that uh, anybody who is a reasonably prudent person knew that our voters were probably going to approve the uh, amendment, but I do support living wage and I have no problem with making sure that these employees are receiving something that is 
going to allow them to, uh, again, live in Palm Beach County. Um, with that being said, Dan, what is the impact on our other budgets or our other uh, contracts that are out there? Obviously, FCC is not the only one that's been impacted. Are we looking at other adjustments coming down the road? We haven't received a request from any of the other haulers at this point in time. It doesn't mean they can't, but I will tell you that FCC's reliance on this subcontract labor is significantly greater than the other haulers simply because of the fact that they they chose to use um, the temporary labor company as a means of meeting their uh, one of the ways of meeting their MWSBE goals under the contract. Well, so, I, I'm going to be supportive of this because again I think that we have to even in our subcontracts be uh, supporting living wage for people within the county so I will be supportive. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Commissioner Bernard, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm gonna make a motion to approve item 9D1, supporting staff's recommendation. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? All opposed, this motion carries 7-0. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, now moving on to 9D2. This is the Blighted and Distressed Property Cleanup and Beautification Grant Award. One of our favorite. Uh, Mr. Gonsalves will be handling that for the authority. He's the new Director of Customer Information Services. We need to get you a sign, uh, a placard. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I would like to... Uh, <clears throat> I'm here today because we are here to seek board direction for the 2023 Blighted and Distressed Property Cleanup and Beautification Grant Awards. The program is in its ninth year and SWA has awarded a total of $5,021,082.56 to our governmental proper, our partners to reduce blighted areas throughout the county. To qualify for this grant, the project submittal would have to include demolition of blight or distressed property. We received a total of eight applications from six distinguished applicants, totaling $1,089,162.50. Staff has performed a review of the applications to determine compliance with the intent of the program and its staff's opinion that five of the eight projects meet these requirements. The three projects that did not meet the guidelines are as follows. The City of Green Acres for their Freedom Park Nature Trail submittal, the school district of Palm Beach County for their Lighthouse Elementary submittal, and the city of Lake Worth Beach for their Pinecrest Cemetery Access Modification submittal. In 2022, the board approved $750,000 for the 2023 Blighted and Distressed Property Cleanup Grant. The amounts requested equal a total of $839,474, which exceeds this amount by $89,474. We were recently informed that Boynton Beach CRA returned $43,859 and the town of Loxahatchee Groves returned $331,875 for their fiscal year 2022 submittals, which could be applied to the 2023 submittals. Staff requests the board review the applications and identify which projects it wishes to fund and the amounts to be funded. Staff will be available to assist with any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, Commissioner McKinley, you are recognized. There we go, thank you. Um, I'm gonna support this, but I'd also like to add just a couple of comments. Um, the first one is I would like to ask that you please update your email list. Uh, when we realized that no one in the Glades had applied for any projects, it was a little concerning. I did hear from Pahokee and South Bay and they indicated um, that they didn't have anything eligible this year, but uh, Bell Glade, it was sent to Lomax Harrell, who's not been the city manager there in years. And so I fear that maybe the reason they didn't apply for anything is they never got the email. Um, so if we could look at making sure that that email list is up to date and also that when you send that email notification out, that you copy the commission offices so that we can then follow up uh, with the cities and the CRAs and such in our individual districts. Um, I'd also 
I'm supportive this year of what the school district is doing in number two. I believe it's a partnership with the Education Foundation. I do think moving forward, since our, we're kind of limited at $750,000 a year, and so when you see one project taking up nearly 570000 of that, um, it's just kind of unfair to some of the other applicants. So I think moving forward, there should be a maximum amount uh, that they can apply for. Um, because of the funds that were returned, uh, the, the Loxahatchee Groves and the city of Boynton Beach, I would like to ask that uh, when those are, are they actually in the coffers now? So the, the funds for, um, Bo for is Boynton Beach, right, and Loxahatchee Groves were not distributed. Okay. So they're actually, when they're not spent by the end of the year, they end up in the general reserve. So we have the cash, we just, it's not necessarily in this year, but we usually have, there's usually excess funds available and if necessary we could, if the board wished to apply those funds to fund this, well, we can make it happen. I would like to then make the motion to use some of those funds and approve the staff recommendation of projects number two and four and to, to help out my brothers in the other districts, uh, application number six, which is the Boynton Beach CRA project, application number seven, which is the city of Delray Beach, um, and also application number eight, which is also the city, I mean, uh, Delray Beach CRA. Um, and then the leftover amount, I would like to see us put that back out, and um, maybe Belgley will apply for something. But I think that amount is, if you take 374 minus the two, approximately 210, that should leave you $164,000 left over. So I'd like love to see if we could put another application, another call for RFPs out on the street and appropriate those dollars. Those dollars should be used for this purpose. They're so limited. Uh, and you can't get state demolition, and this is one of the the great resources that our county offers to our cities to help clean up blight. So that would be my motion, Mr. Chair. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Marino. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have comments uh, by uh, Commissioner uh, Kerner. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I, I certainly appreciate Commissioner McKinley's motion. I'm happy to support it. Just wanted to uh, understand the dialogue and the dissenting votes by the uh, Citizens Advisory Committee. We, I personally very much appreciate their service and rely heavily on their input. Yes, so the Citizens Advisory Committee, um, their hesitance was largely based upon their, their not knowing what the board would consider doing um, as it relates to the additional funds. Uh, the board has in the past made um, additional funds available to fund them all and they didn't feel comfortable um, weighing in on this issue without knowing uh, whether the board would consider applying additional funds or not. So that was basically their concern. They didn't want to be picking and going through the trouble of picking which ones to fund and which ones not to if they thought eventually the board would probably fund them all. All right, now follow up to the, the uh, present motion by Commissioner McKinley. What type of staff, staff resources would it take to issue a new RFP for the remaining funds? Uh, not very many, but what I would like in the motion is explicit authorization to um, transfer funds for that purpose from the General Reserve so that we don't impact current revenue. So this would basically be pulling funds that just flowed into the General Reserve on September 30th back out for the purpose of funding these additional projects. It's a small amount of money. We've got over $110 million in the General Reserve. So I would just like that authorization. I will include that authorization in my motion. Thank you, Ms. And thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, um, moving on. Let's see. I guess it's going to be uh, Mr. Pelowitz. Did you ask to be recognized? Uh, that was actually my comment. Thank you. Okay. And then um, uh, Commissioner Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In regards to the city of Green Acres, is it possible to have a conversation with the city just to explain the blighted grant program? So in that way, I've seen that they've only received. Um, you know, an allocation in 2022. And so we definitely would love for them to understand it. And so in that way they can apply for other projects in the future. Absolutely, we'll follow up with them this afternoon. Uh, just go over the scope 
of the intent of the program and uh, see if they have any submittals. If we put it back out on the street, we could definitely do that. Thank you very much. And um, first off, I have to acknowledge Mr. Gonsalves. You, you do have a placard, but it, it's not right in front of you, so my bad. Um, but I also wanted to ask if you can do the same thing for the city of uh, Lake Worth Beach. Um, I know they've got new administration there, and uh, you might want to also do it with Boynton Beach because they also have brand new administration there as well. So, and Jupiter, I think, I think maybe um, if you had a copy of the newest uh, publication that shows all of the elected officials and city managers, that would be great, and I'm sure our staff can supply that to you. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I see no other lights. Just one comment, Mr. Chair. Sure. Um, I'm hearing a lot of concerns. It sounds like the Solid Waste Authority might want to contact the League of Cities mm. and do a presentation at a League of Cities meeting on what these grants are and how they can be used. Yes, we can do that. All right. Uh, seeing no other further uh, discussion, I'll, I'll call the question. All those in favor, all those opposed, the motion passes 7-0. All right, moving along. Where are we? Uh, we are now up to item 9E1. This is uh, Engineering Construction Services on High Point Agro Bedding Florida LLC lease agreement. Morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Uh, this is the lease agreement for High Point Agro Bedding. Uh, this is a five acre parcel we've leased to Horizon back in 2018. And uh, this is just a background there. Uh, June 2019, uh, the board approved the 20-year lease. And uh, December 2020, Horizon paid the first lease fee of $74,600. And in February 2021, the board approved the lease assignment to a new entity, High Point Agro Bedding. And in October 2021, the board also deferred uh, the lease payment that was due in December 2021. And April of this year, uh, the board um, set a bunch of conditions here for High Point, which is to pay the December 2021 uh, lease amount of $79,150 plus the 2% finance charge. And they did that before the deadline of May 13th. And they also paid the taxes of $9,982 uh, by end of March. And they also provided a letter from the bonding company to confirm the commitment to this project. And the board also set a deadline of 12th of October to submit all the permit applications, which was a couple of weeks ago. And they've made good progress on this one. And uh, this is a list of uh, items that they have uh, uh, submitted so far. Engineering plans were submitted to Palm Beach County Fire Marshal uh, by end of August, and they received their approval on uh, 5th of October. And they submitted uh, paving and, drain and drainage plans to Palm Beach County Building Department and they also received an exemption from uh, South Florida Water Management District because the site usable area is less than five years, uh, so that gives them that exemption. And uh, they've been working with Palm Beach County Water Utilities Department, and they have made a couple of draft submittals, and uh, they're also working on their uh, Lake Worth Drainage District permit application, which is pending, and uh, also the Palm Beach County Department uh, Health Department permit application, which is also pending. And the nature of these permit applications, they have to receive approvals for certain permits before they can submit the other permits because it's, it's referenced there. So the, because of that sequencing, you know, they cannot submit all the permit applications all at one time. And, um, but they've made good progress, and, uh, and they're here to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions? So specifically, what direction are you asking for? We don't have recommendation, but if uh, we're seeking direction, you know, I mean, I would say let them continue um, uh, on the project because they made good progress in the last six months. That would be my recommendation if there's any. I mean, it's, I, I look out there and see David Goodlett and uh, I don't know about him, he's a little, <laughs> just teasing. No, I think that they've made tremendous progress. I'm satisfied with the progress that they've made. I understand the hiccups in the uh, permit application process. Um, I think we all know that our planning, zoning, and building department is slammed and understaffed right now. Um, and so I would hate to punish any of the applicants for any delay that could be 
a combination of the, the hoops that they have to go through as well as just the burdensome process of working through our PZ and B department. So I'm fine giving staff direction to continue working with this uh, Horizon 880, our high point aggro, sorry. All right, uh, Commissioner Marino, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Goodlett, since you are in the audience, anything you'd like to add? We can see your handsome face and you can tell us, oh, everything is moving along fabulously. I'm gonna ask that you submit a card after you've completed your comments, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, so I, I will be very brief. I just want to compliment both the county uh, building planning and zoning folks. We had a meeting with them as suggested and there was a table full of their uh, uh, personnel representing various divisions and um, the same here with the leadership at the Solid Waste Authority. Folks have been over backwards to help us get this moving and I just w want to say thank you. I I I'm an unpaid uh, person helping with this because if we can remove this waste stream, and I know you know this, but it just makes me feel good to say it. If we can remove this part of the waste stream uh, out of what the SWA has to handle, we, ha we will have done uh, God's work because having grown up in the sugar industry and other places, this effect on the water column is significant. And so we appreciate your leadership, the county's leadership, and your indulgence while we try to get our act together, together and I think we're there. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, sir. All right. All right, so you have your direction, I see. All right, anything else? Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, planning environmental service programs, any? Uh, no items today, thank you. Thank you. Financial management services. I have no items today. This okay. One. We don't have any other scheduled matters. Uh, General counsel, sir, would you have any comments? No comments, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, authority staff, do you have any additional comments, sir? Well, the only thing I would like to do is to just recognize Commissioner Melissa McKinley. Um, after eight years on the Solid Waste Authority Board, I just want to express my appreciation for you, your leadership, and uh, your support over these years. Um, there's, I can attest to the fact that I don't think there's anyone who works harder for their constituents than you do. Uh, based upon uh, the late emails and text messages we often receive. So it, it doesn't stop, but um, I, I really appreciate the time you spent with us, and I wish you all the best in whatever you do. Thank you. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and, and we can, uh, we'll do comments by the board, and we'll go in... Uh, uh, district number order. So, uh, Commissioner Marino, you are recognized. Good morning. Thank you. I just wanted to say, staff, we had some issues in Jupiter Farms, and you all were wonderful in accommodating our residents and showing why we're leading in the industry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kerner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No comments. Um, I'm sure we'll have a lot of nice and meaningful things to say at our reorganization meeting uh, after the election about our dear fellow Commissioner McKinley. All right. Uh, Mayor Weinroth. I'm commentless. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Sachs, please. Get that on the record, <laughs> Mayor. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, the staff, there were a few residential areas in my district that were uh, not part of the big post-hurricane pickup. And one phone call, and within 24 hours, all the debris was picked up. They were so shocked, they kept calling my office to thank me over and over. And I, the thanks goes to you all, the staff, for being right on it. Appreciate it very much. And uh, we're going to miss Commissioner McKinley. Maybe we could make a motion to keep her on forever, I don't know, as an honorary member. Thank you, thank you very much for uh, getting right on to that uh, post-hurricane pickup, thank you. Commissioner McKinley, you're recognized. Thank you, well, I'm not going out quietly. Um, so I've got two items to, to discuss today, the first one being that hurricane debris removal pickup. 
Uh, Mr. Pelowitz, we had a lot of calls and emails from uh, constituents out in the acreage in particular and some of those larger lots. Could you just, for the record, explain why we weren't able to initiate those disaster debris removal contracts? Yeah, the, the short answer is is that we, we did not have a uh, declaration under uh, category, uh, the category A, which is for debris. So there were, we were under a declaration for uh, storm preparation category B, but not category A. A lot of the other counties around us uh, on the west coast and to our further north did get uh, authorization for category A, but we did not. And so under those circumstances, we have to rely on the services of our franchise haulers uh, to, to facilitate that pickup. And in a lot of cases, they do have limited resources. And obviously, they, they have equipment, but they don't plan for a six-yard pile in front of every house on every pickup, and that's why there are delays. But I think the haulers in most cases have, have made tremendous strides, and I think we're generally pretty well caught up on that. Uh, I'm aware that there are some folks out in the acreage that have, they're playing by the rules and they've got the piles on their lot and they're bringing out six yards at a time and we do appreciate their, their assistance and cooperation on that matter. And obviously we'd like to get it done as fast as we can, but um, sometimes it's just not feasible. And in this case, we just fell into one of those in-between storms where it wasn't nothing and it wasn't a declaration. It was kind of in the middle and those are the most challenging for us from a customer standpoint. Okay, and you've been pretty lenient in terms of tagging those debris, remove those debris piles? We've been very lenient about it. Um, anything that's been tagged has been tagged because it's got logs and other things in it that are, that just can't be picked up uh, by the hauler's equipment. But um, I work with um, with Paul and, and he worked with the haulers and I can tell you the haulers uh, were instructed to just go beyond and they did. Uh, we will be paying a little bit extra to some of them uh, out of reserves for the additional services that they did provide. We're asking them to document it, um, but it's not it's not substantial. Okay, thank you. The second item I have, uh, Mr. Pelowitz, I think it was back in late July. I, I was contacted. <coughs> I'm not sure if any of the other commissioners were, but I was contacted by a real estate broker about a possible project in somewhere in the vicinity of the city of South Bay. And what I usually do in those circumstances when somebody's talking about wanting to make a significant investment in Palm Beach County is I kick it over to the Business Development Board. Um, they worked side by side with the real estate broker. They weren't able to bring that project to fruition. Uh, late last night, I received an email that I responded to this morning from that real estate broker who is blaming that denial um, on the Solid Waste Authority. And if some of the commissioners here haven't received that email, you might be receiving it soon. Um, they're talking about a loss of a multi-million dollar investment in jobs in the city of South Bay. But can you give me a little bit of background and the reason why you were hesitant on a, um, recommending to or bringing to us that proposed project permit uh, application? Well, there are several reasons. So we did have item uh, nine, F1 was on the agenda that was deleted in which our position on, on their um, proposal was, was stated. Um, originally, uh, several months back, uh, Hughes Energy Group approached authority staff uh, with a question about the permitting of a solid waste management facility in Palm Beach County to receive waste from Palm Beach County, uh, food waste and other materials uh, to be delivered to their project. Uh, they were advised at the time that the authority has strict flow control provisions in place that requires all waste generated or existing in Palm Beach County to be delivered to a solid waste management facility designated by the authority. That flow control, those flow control powers are there uh, for a reason because th that is what ensures that we have the ability to bond these facilities, these very expensive facilities that we have to build. So it's essential to our, our, our bond rating that we enforce flow control. <clears throat> so they were advised of that by staff. Subsequently, they uh, contacted the Business Development Board and came through the Business Development Board. Uh, we quickly realized that the people the Business Development Board was representing were the very same people who staff had previously talked to. Um, we advised them repeatedly that we had concerns 
as it relates to flow control. Uh, when they um, were faced with the flow control issue, they indicated to us that they would then change their proposal to only take in waste from outside the county. Um, we advised them that the authority had never permitted a facility uh, solely to receive waste from outside of Palm Beach County, that we had concerns that, that only the board could make that determination because it could potentially set a precedent for more uh, regional solid waste management facilities being built in Palm Beach County to service the needs of not Palm Beach County residents, but residents outside the county. Um, it is staff's position that that's not appropriate. Um, that we probably shouldn't be doing that because we've gone to great lengths to create one of the best systems in the world and we didn't do that to have our county um, become a location for regional solid waste management facilities that don't support our residents. Um, the further issue that was not stated in the memo is that this facility, and what was expressed to Hughes, was that this facility was intended to be located in close, within South Bay, within a half a mile of South Bay's residents. Um, the EPA and others are strongly uh, engaged right now in the environmental justice movement, which is intended to uh, address previous uh, situations in which uh, solid waste management and other uh, facilities that are controversial are located in and near uh, low-income and minority communities. This was a classic example of a solid waste management facility intended to be located near the residents of South Bay, uh, in our opinion, because the land was inexpensive. And that is a classic environmental justice concern, and our position was that that, that what could be problematic. Ultimately, we, our intent was to put this in the hands of the board, um, but um, when the applicant, potential applicant, they aren't an applicant yet, saw staff's uh, position on the issue, they decided to withdraw their presentation they intended to do today. Um, I stand by our analysis on it, I stand by the position on it, and I also believe that uh, if with the board's direction we intend to come back in February with amendments to uh, the applicable resolution and rule one to um, make it clear that, that we do not, this board does not intend to permit facilities in Palm Beach County uh, solely for the purpose or even predominantly for the purpose of taking in waste from outside of Palm Beach County. Mr. Pelowitz, as a, um, actually as a member of the EPA's Local Government Advisory Committee, I also sit on their uh, Environmental Justice Subcommittee. Um, so you're spot on in that analysis. That is a priority for them and definitely a conversation they're having with leaders across the country. Um, I appreciate a little bit more of that background. You know, sometimes when we get emails in our office, it's, it's, we, we don't get the full picture. And so um, it just, I'll say in my parting words, um, I am all for investment in the Glades community. We've done two of the largest economic development projects in a quarter of a century with TELUS and with FinFROC, both high-end, high-paying manufacturing jobs. I will not allow, even if I'm standing at that podium as an unpaid just citizen of Palm Beach County, allow the Glades to become the uh, rest of Florida's dumping grounds because they think that it's some sort of economic benefit to the residents in the Glades. The hell with that. You know, we are, that Glades community is a beautiful community that deserves solid investment and not somebody that wants to build a landfill. And uh, even if it's ever the Solid Waste Authority proposing to do that, I think that was my very first appearance before you back in like 2005. <laughs> Um, I came here as a mom and arguing against that, but the Glades is beautiful. It doesn't deserve that kind of investment, and if anybody is looking to invest in the Glades, they can look at some high-end manufacturing or other solid jobs, and so I appreciate staff's position and appreciate that background. It has been an honor to see all of you and to work with you, not only for the last eight years as a commissioner, but the five years before that when I was on staff. You have a tremendous team here. It is one of the best, if not the best, in the country, and I've toured a lot of this country um, in, in my leadership role here, and uh, I've been honored to serve with all of you. And Paul, to you and to John, not to single out the rest of you are great, but the work that you've helped me do in the acreage, 
uh, in terms of following up on trash that was missed and some very upset constituents out there and some of the new policies that the board has. I really appreciate that. You guys are a great go-between between between my office and the residents, and I thank you for everything that you do and that you will continue to do. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're very welcome. Thank you for those comments. All right, uh, Commissioner uh, Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Just want to thank staff for their approach on the item in South Bay um, and thanking uh, the Commissioner for District 6, Commissioner McKinley, uh, because, you know, I know I, I used to represent the Glades as a state representative and hearing that someone would want to bring their waste to the Glades as a form of economic development, yeah. this is a shame, uh, but I support staff and I hope that we bring a resolution to prevent that from happening. And Dan, this has been a great year by you and your upper management and just want to thank the entire staff uh, and all of the employees of the Solid Waste Authority for all the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, and and just uh, to add my comments, first off, um, uh, I want to uh, echo my colleague Commissioner McKinley's comments in regards to creating a dumping ground out in out in the glades. That's it's hard to 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 matter. Oh to fathom. I do want to, though, recognize I, I attended, there was a joint meeting between the South, uh, between the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council and the Southeast Florida Regional Planning Councils uh, this past uh, Friday at uh, FAU, specifically talking about waste uh, and systems and, you know, what each of uh, the uh, counties has. And so that represent, I mean, that's, it was a, there was a big group. Uh, and I will tell you what the standout uh, of, it, of it all was, was Palm Beach County. Um, absolutely um, blew uh, the socks off of the people that were attending to see the progressive kinds of programs, uh, whether it was from education to our uh, waste to energy plant to um, just all that goes on here. It was, uh, it was, It was really nice to be representing our community and to hear the comments from the folks that were attending uh, the conference. And it was it was not only elected, there were a lot of uh, citizens that had attended as well. And um, I have to say, I couldn't be more proud and and of all of you, the work that you all do, um, the tremendous ideas that you all have come up with, and the boards that came before us that had the foresight and the uh, prescience to be able to find um, the funding and sometimes find the political will um, that was required to put us to where we are today. And I'm glad to be able to continue to provide that support and and just kudos to you all. And um, you've created an amazing, uh, it's hard to say garbage, but um, the garbage, uh, it, it is, it's something we all have and we all have to deal with, but you all have found a way to, to put us on the map as, as a, a point of light in how to manage this. So thank you. I just want to say thank you as well because, you know, we do come up with good ideas, but there are others that do as well. The difference between Palm Beach County and everywhere else is we've always had supportive boards who are willing to make the investment and take the bold steps necessary to produce a system like this. It's very rare that someone can come to a board uh, with a proposal for a $700 million waste energy project and have that uh, go through uh, the way it has here in Palm Beach County. So I do really appreciate all of your efforts and the previous boards as well in support of making Palm Beach County uh, one of the bright lights in solid waste management. So I do appreciate that and thank you for the words. All right. All right, uh, seeing, I don't see any lights lit. So with that, I think we've completed our agenda and uh, this meeting is adjourned and we will see you, I guess, at our reorganizational meeting um, uh, in a couple weeks. Yes, can we just confirm the next the next meeting is the organizational meeting? Uh, On the November 15th. November 15th, the next regular meeting is in December. Um, it is our objective as typical 
Uh, if we don't have anything pressing, uh, we'll notify you that we will cancel that meeting and, and our next meeting will be in February. All right, sir. Well, thank you. Adjourned. Adjourned. Perfect. No comments, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh,